Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm Jen Keller. Welcome to my studio that I share with my daughter, as you can see, with uh, her fabulous art back there. And uh, today I'm going to talk about my digital artwork, my work at Keller Kiddo Designs, which are these adorable little animal prints that I've been doing uh, for the past two or three years. So today I'm going to talk about this piece in particular. I'm going to talk about the raccoons and sort of my process, how these kind of came to be. And um, I thought that would be easier than talking in general so I can go through the specifics of how that piece was designed. It was probably one of my more recent pieces, so it's a little bit more involved. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. So my nursery art pieces are all based on real animals, whether they're domesticated or wild, exotic, endangered, uh, plentiful, <laughs> as uh, raccoons are. And uh, the raccoon piece in particular, I wanted to focus on the last couple pieces on local wildlife that you would find here in Illinois. So I decided to do these raccoons. I love the idea of them all hunkering down together. Most of my pieces, I only have one or two animals in there. So this is the first one I did that had uh, three animals, a mama or a papa, and it's two little kits. And then that's how that one came to be. So let's start. So whenever I start a piece, I usually do a lot of research first. Um, I research photos. Sometimes I'll go to zoos and draw from life. I don't do that as much as I used to now that I have oops, a tiny person <laughs> that takes up uh, a good chunk of my time. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so for this one, raccoons in particular, I found I was a little rusty. I hadn't studied uh, that particular animal very much, as opposed to a lot of the other ones. I've done a lot of studies of big cats, dogs, obviously tons of dogs and canines. Um, but raccoons are their own kind of special thing. They're their own kind of special family. I can't, it's a long word and it begins with a P. I'm not going to pretend to know it or say it. Um, can go on the, the zoo websites <laughs> to find that. Um, so when I first started this one, I started out um, doing research. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm going to kind of show you my body of research. Back. <laughs> um, so here is my body of research for my little raccoon piece. So what I do is I usually uh, go on to the internet and uh, research uh, the animal that I am drawing at the time and I make a collection of images uh, to use. I study uh, their anatomy, I study behavior, I uh, research how uh, they interact with each other whether it's through videos or images. Um, <clears throat> before, like I said, before I had my daughter I would actually go to zoos and uh, observe from life and right now that's not as much an option way back in the day, remember we used to go to the library and Xerox this stuff. I want to emphasize that I only use these images, oh my god, so cute. I only use these images for research. I never ever ever uh, replicate an image. So you can see uh, some of these especially, I pulled these out specifically because they were a big inspiration for me for my piece, but you'll notice when we uh, go back to the artwork that um, it's not identical by any means, but uh, similar but not identical. Uh, one of the things that's really important to me is to capture these animals in a natural state. I want to be true to who they are as, uh, as animals in the natural world. So there you go. So moving on to so the next step I do for these pieces, uh, this one in particular, I don't do this for a lot of them because like I said before, a lot of the other animals I've done a lot of studies of previously, but the raccoons in particular I hadn't. So I went into a lot of my photo research and I just did as if I was going to the nature center. I just did sketches and uh, here are some of the sketches I did. Just kind of trying to understand uh, their anatomy, the way their fur lies, how they sit up, uh, just how they work so I can represent them accurately. Uh, and then after that, I knew I wanted to have the three kind of all hunkered down together in some sort of tree. I wanted it to be a part of my Starry Night series, which I had already had a bunch of woodland animals in. 
sort of has become the woodland stars and moon theme. Uh, so um, it, it worked out perfect. I was like, all right, little raccoon's going to sleep. So then I worked on some thumbnails, which is this process here, which is just some quick sketches. And you can see I was trying to figure out, you know, because I didn't want them all sort of uniform. I wanted a, a nice circle pattern. So you can see there in that I sort of worked out some of these thumbnails and then there's some more of them figuring out how they're kind of going to be sitting there in the tree. And you can see how it's getting closer and closer to what the drawing ended up being. So once I figured out those thumbnails, and uh, sometimes I'll do a, a grander, rougher sketch, uh, but for this one, I did not. I just moved straight on to the final piece, and then I'll do a pencil drawing. All of my work is all based off of real drawing. I don't do any drawing on the computer. I finish it digitally, but all my stuff is done by my own hand drawing. So then, ta-da, we have the final drawing here. That I worked on. So, and for this one in particular, I, I did a little bit of value. I don't always do value because when I go in an ink, I won't do any value in there. But for this one in particular, I did some value because I knew I wanted that nice dark there to have them pop out and uh, have them do well. So that's the drawing process. And then after that, oh yeah, my tiger's on the other side there. Wow. Um, and then after I did that, I ink. Now, when I uh, when I do my normal ink work, I'll do a drawing and then I ink right on top of the drawing. But for the integrity of these drawings, because I'm mass producing them, not, I don't want to say commercially, but I suppose that's what it is. Um, you know, I want to keep the integrity of the drawing, especially just in case something goes wrong with the inking and then you have your, your drawing is ruined. So I use a really high quality uh, smooth marker tracing paper, and then I will uh, I will ink it. So that is this here. Let me get this out for you guys so you can see. So then I ink it, and this is the inked the final inked piece. See if I hold it up. I didn't want to hold it up, so it's just like see through. And you can see the little. You know, like a lot of people, you know, you don't have an eraser, so you want to, a little line gets messed up here, messed up there. You want it all to uh, look, we all want it to look perfect or look the way we want it to look. So that's the final ink drawing. I use uh, Micron pens for all my inking. I love them. They're my favorite. They do dry out pretty quickly, but... Um, I've always used those. They're, they're archival. They're nice and smooth. Uh, they're my favorite pens. And then once I have it in Photoshop, I'll go in and you can see the, the, all the little blobs and the blocks and all the stuff that's kind of not working. And this process can be a little tedious because this is all the stuff that you can't really see with the naked eye. You know, like if you were to look at the ink drawing right up close, you probably wouldn't see all the little glops and the glips and the little mistakes or you know challenges one might say so I have to go in into Photoshop and clean it all up which is what I did and so there you can see a big difference right it's all really clean it's the darkers are darker the brighters are brighter if those are even words I don't think so but oh well um, yeah, so you can see then that process will take me. It just depends on how difficult the piece is. This one in particular, uh, if I remember correctly, the tree took a lot of time cleaning up. So, and there's still some little things. But those, and I always make a decision, like, is it easier to clean up in Illustrator or is it easier to clean up in Photoshop? So I try to get it as clean as possible in Photoshop. And then once I do that, I... Uh, bring it over into Illustrator to make it into a vector file. Hi, so here we are in Illustrator with our uh, scanned in piece. I think this is actually the old one, but that's okay. It's just to kind of show you, um, you know, what the next step is. So I'll scan in the uh, cleaned up ink drawing. And then once I do that, I um, will, uh, change it into a vector file. So there's all sorts of little details that go into uh, creating this. It's called a line trace. And basically what happens is you go in and uh, 
click a few magical things. I can't give away all my secrets, you guys. Um, but it basically traces your image and makes it into what's called a vector file, which is what gives it that nice, flat graphic feel. It kind of takes away um, all of the little shading and all of the little, like I said, the glips and the glops, which I feel like now is a technical term. <laughs> and and uh, it fixes them up. But then uh, it doesn't it doesn't automatically make it look this pretty. It doesn't go from this to this. I usually have to spend quite uh, a lot of time going in and and cleaning up lines and and making sure everything looks right because a lot of times the transfer isn't always pretty and you can even see in their faces uh, when you look at this original you can see that I did some tweaking there right like I made the eyes a little brighter I brought their eyes in a little more made them a little more even because nobody in the planet on the planet uh, has a symmetrical face. They're all a little asymmetrical. So we all have a tendency to draw it that way, but when it gets transferred into this very flat graphic style, that uh, asymmetricality, if that is also a word, I keep making up words, um, but it makes it, uh, it looks really awkward. So I have to go in and fix all of that. And there's always like little details that didn't quite turn out. And you can see too with the, uh, and this tree, my also memory serves me, um, fixing all the bark, the lines of the bark, getting it more clean. I think a lot of them didn't really pick up, but I like that kind of scratchy feel. I did like that, um, it gives that, that really barky feel. But, um, you know, I couldn't, I had to have some sort of solid lines in there and, and different line weights, which is really important. So, yeah, and then once I do that and get all that line work uh, figured out, then we move on to the color portion, which I also do in Photoshop. And ta-da! So this is pretty much the final piece. And you can see over here, just like when you're painting, I like to work with my palette. So I have a selection of colors, and this is how I play with it. A lot of times I'll go back and forth to figure out what colors are. That's the one of the benefits of doing digital, is that when you are doing painting, you really have to have all of that figured out ahead of time. When I used to paint in watercolor, I would have a little piece of watercolor paper next to me, and that's where I would figure out all the colors before I would put it on. And a lot of times I would do a colored pencil sketch even before I moved on to watercolor, so I knew what colors I wanted it to be as a final. But when you work digitally, you can sort of change colors around pretty easily. It's pretty simple. Um, you just sort of like, oh, I want that to be a little different. You can pull from that and oh, presto, right? Um, but that we don't want that. Um, so yeah, so the the push and pull is is you can work with the piece, and then uh, also you'll see that um, in the oh, that's the the other scan. So you can see in this one that um, there are no stars or anything in there, right? And I have on my little stars here. So what I like to also do with these pieces is I have series. I have about three different series in my nursery art line, in my Keller Kiddo Designs. I might be four, actually. I have Playful Puppies, Starry Night, uh, and Jungle Fun, and I feel like, no, I think it's three. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the Starry Night line this line um, is, it has these stars, and almost every piece has some sort of stars or something glowing. I think the only piece I don't have it in is the foxes, but they have fireflies. And so it's important for to have consistency. So what I'll do a lot of times is this is one of my original pieces, my little owl baby. Um, so I'll pull the colors so it stays consistent in the series. And also I'll, I actually will pull these stars out and drop them in there, in there. Now it's a little more complicated because there's different layers and so sometimes I'll do that part in Photoshop but I'm pretty sure for this piece I did it in Illustrator because there weren't too many, I wanted it a little more simple. So yeah, so that's how I go about making that color part of the piece. And then once this piece is all done, then I bring it back into Photoshop and uh, do the final creation. And there you go. That is how I essentially create these pieces. The next and final step generally is I'll take that Illustrator piece, uh, put it into Photoshop, and then just size it out for the printing, which is kind of boring. So 
I don't think you guys would be interested in that, but that's how I make the art. All in all, each piece, I would say, probably takes me, like I said, the the drawing and the inking is probably the more time-consuming part. I would say each piece takes me about two months total, sometimes two to three months, like I said, depending on what else I have going on. Um, yeah, so that is it. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to post them. Uh, I'm so happy to share this process with you. I hope you found it interesting uh, moving from drawing and research, drawing to digital work. But that's that's what I love about this whole line is that it's this great uh, melding of the digital world and my drawing style to sort of create something really unique. Um, so yeah, so I hope everyone enjoys their day and uh, stay creative.